All right, folks, welcome to the exploring new quizzes functionality. We've got Cassidy and Steve, two resident Canvas experts, going to walk us through some of what Canvas has to offer, um, particularly in the quizzes department. Uh, lots of good material there. So I will be monitoring the Q&A box. If you notice down at the bottom, there's a Q&A box. Feel free to throw questions in there. Um, as they come up, and I will try to make sure that these guys get an opportunity to answer them. Um, other than that, thank you so much for coming here today. I know there's other things you could have done with your Friday. Glad you chose to spend at least a portion of it with us. And with that, Steve, Cassidy, take it away. All right, so we're going to um, dive in mainly to the functionality of new quizzes. Um, I will mention a little bit about old quizzes just for the sake of context. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Steve, you can see that? Yes. All right. So, uh, so first, just a little bit of background. We have classic quizzes and we have new quizzes. Classic quizzes are what you've been used to uh, in building for the last few years in Canvas and new quizzes is still technically a beta, um, but it is it was originally slated to take over the quizzing spot uh, in December of this year, but due to COVID and things like that, they have pushed that deadline back um, to at least summer of 2021. But eventually new quizzes will take uh, the classic quizzes spot uh, just underneath the quizzes button in the navigation. So if we go into quizzes in our navigation, you'll notice that there are some icons that are just an outline and then you got some solid icons and your solid icons are your new quizzes. You can migrate your classic quizzes over to new quizzes if you want to start playing in the new quizzes area. It's pretty simple. Uh, any of your old classic quizzes there, you can go to the three dots and you click migrate. And it should move all of your question types and points and all that stuff over to new quizzes. To create a new quiz, it's a, a bit of a workaround right now. Again, it's in beta. So what you're actually creating with a new quiz is an assignment with an LTI external tool attached. So we'll, we'll show you that. So if we click quiz and you go to new quizzes, this is how you create a new quiz. Now, if you click this box here that says, remember my choice, you won't see this box again. You won't have an option to choose classic quizzes. So if you, ask, if you click that and you decide, well, I really do want classic quizzes back, you come to these three dots and say, reset my choice, uh, and then you'll get this dialog box back again. So I'm gonna create my new quiz. And it looks very much like an assignment, because it is. So we're gonna do a training. I'm gonna do this new quiz. And this is a little bit unusual too because it's an assignment, technically you need to put the points in. So for a new quiz, um, you should already know how much you want this quiz to be worth. And you need to match these total points here with how many points each question adds up to. There's no warning if you don't do it. Uh, like if you put, you know, that this quiz is gonna be worth 50 points, but then as you're adding questions in the quiz and you add it, it only adds up to 40 points, then the most a student can earn is 40 out of 50. So you need to make sure that the points for the questions add up to the total points that you put in here. So you choose your assignment group like normal, we're gonna leave this as points, and it auto populates the external tool link that you need already for you. So you can keep going past that. Um, and down here at the bottom is where you assign it to everyone. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. and it jumps us right into the new quiz build. So you have your title that you already put in the other page. Uh, and the second box here is where you'll add instructions. So you can say, take the quiz. And done. So now you have instructions and title, but no questions yet. On the left-hand side here, this is your navigator. So you can already see the title, which is new quiz training up here, and the instructions, which is this box here. And then as we add questions, you'll see them populate down this way. 
right now we're in the build phase. So we'll be building questions, adding questions to the quiz, that kind of thing. Um, we have settings, reports are of course after the fact, after the quizzes have been taken by the students and moderate is the same uh, functionality that you had in classic quizzes where you can add extra attempts or add extra time to students as necessary. The return button over here will take you out of the new quiz build and back to uh, your course. And underneath three dots, we have manage item banks, um, which we talked about at length in the item banks class the other day. Uh, but I will mention a few things since uh, just for new, as they pertain to new quizzes. You can build item banks here. Uh, and again, we, we think that it's a good idea to build your questions inside the item bank. Um, and then pull those questions into the quiz as a normal operating procedure. Uh, but that's up to you. So I'm going to open an item bank here. And so you can just see I have multiple questions that I've already built that are inside the item bank. If you want to expand and look at a question, you just hit the little arrow and you can see the stuff that you've done. You can hit the question mark, or sorry, the pencil icon to edit it. If you have this in a quiz and a student has already taken the quiz, then you'll just be editing a copy and not actually the question that is on the quiz. So you can come in here and make any edits you want to the question and then save it, or in this case, done. If you have multiple question banks and you wanna share questions within the question banks, you can click this little copy or move icon here. When this opens up, you could say, I wanna put it in an existing bank or I wanna create a whole new bank. If you choose existing, you get to pick which one that is. And you can say, keep a copy here, which means you're just copying it over to the new bank. If you uncheck this box, it will actually move the question from this item bank to that other item bank. Inside an item bank, you have filters. So you can click filters when you're trying to search for a question. This helps if your item bank is huge, like if you have 100 questions in your item bank. You can sort by choices, uh, like you know, if you have a multi, if you know it's a multiple choice question, or you want to look at the true false questions, you can sort that here. Or in the questions, you can if you can when you're creating the questions, you can add tags or what people call metadata to it as something you might remember, and you could search that. Or for example, you could just search up here for keywords. If I type SMU, it'll find any questions that I had with the SMU tag or SMU in the words, I'm sorry. Tags are down here. The words and the questions would be searched from the search bar. Okay. For um, item banks, as far as pulling in question banks from other quizzes, there's a process in exporting the other quiz that we're not gonna get into right now, but you would have to export another quiz first and that would give you a zip file. Then you need to come in here and create a bank you can call it really whatever you want because it'll take on the name of the quiz that you import to it. But I just created this little one here and you can see that it's empty. Once I'm in here in an empty question bank or item bank, I can start creating questions on my own. But if you want to import questions from a previous quiz, you need to do that before you create anything. This item bank has to be empty. And then underneath three dots, you'll have the ability to import content and when you import content, you just simply browse your computer for that zip file that you're looking for um, from the exported quiz. And you can import it here and it will import all of the questions into this item bank for you. Once you've done the import, the name will change to match the quiz that you imported, as well as you can start creating new questions and adding more questions to the item bank if you want to. But it's just key to remember that this bank has to be empty for that import option to be available. If you add a single question to here, when you try and pull this down, this will be great out want to import information. Some publishers may have question banks that they can provide you. you want to address that? Get the zip file from publisher content, or you can get it if you export your own quizzes from other courses, or if a colleague has exported a quiz that they want to share with you, you can use that zip file as well. So to get out of item banks, you hit return and it'll take you back to the quiz that you were building. So to add, um, it's a little different in the way that you build quizzes here. 
again, we prefer that you build questions inside the item banks and then pull them in, but you can create questions right on the quiz. And either way you create questions, it's the same idea. You hit the little blue plus sign here in the circle and you will get prompted with what kind of question do you want to create? So for example, if I choose multiple choice, I could come down here. Now it is important to give your quiz question a title because when you put them in the, these in an item bank later, or if you're looking for them later, it's much easier to find, you know, these questions by title um, sometimes. So if I'm going to do, um, do that, and I could say, what year was SMU founded? So that's my question. And I can type in an answer and say 1895. 1901, 1911, or 1937. And you mark which, oops, I simply hit done. If you mark, you mark which answer is correct. And each one of these bubble icons here allows you to provide feedback per answer. So you can get really granular in providing feedback and tell a student why they got the question right or why they got the question wrong or why they were just so close but not exactly right. If you want to add more answers, you click the plus answer. And if you want to get rid of an answer, you hit the trash can. Down here under options, if you're using things like a numeric question, you can allow the students to use an on-screen calculator. This option will allow the calculator to become visible just for this question. In the settings, if your entire quiz is numerical, then you could allow the calculator used for the entire quiz but again, this setting is just for this question. So you can choose to vary points by answer, and this will allow you to sort of get a way of getting partial credit. So if there is a, you know, if you're looking for a specific decimal place number, like two decimals out, and you give a distractor that's, you know, only got one decimal, and you want to give them partial credit for that, you can assign the points here for each answer. Shuffle choices make sense. You're just shuffling the answers around so that the questions look a little different to each student. You can do the shuffle choices or shuffle answers option in the settings up here at the top for the entire quiz. But this, again, this shuffle choices is only pertains to this question. You might mention the all of the above sort of question. That's true. So if you're doing multiple choice and you have an answer that where it says either both uh, you know, like all of the above. When you shuffle choices, all of the above could end up being the first option. So you want to change your vernacular to say something like all of these or all of the answers or all of these are correct. Something to that effect so that it's not all of the above because it may not be, there may not be anything above it when you shuffle them around. We will not be using outcomes and quizzes or anything like this, attaching outcomes in any way. Uh, this fashion, we're gonna be getting a new tool coming in the fall, uh, which will be announced shortly. So we can skip right over this. And if you're building questions directly into the quiz, instead of using an item bank, and you realized, oh, you know, I really wanna put this in an item bank for later, because these do not get put in, these questions do not get put into item banks by default. There's no unfiled item bank or anything like that. So you'll need to put the questions as you create them into an item bank. So you click that and you click add to bank and then you'll get, I either need to create a new bank because I forgot to, or I can choose an existing bank that I have and start adding these questions to them. And then here at the bottom, if you didn't choose partial credit to where you assigned points to each individual answer, this is where you would assign the points for the question in general. So I'm gonna make this a three point question. And again, you have the option to provide feedback per answer, or you can add feedback here to the question overall. And when you do this, you have an option to choose, this is feedback if students get the answer correct. This is feedback if incorrect, or just general feedback that you wanna provide. So there's lots of opportunities to provide feedback. Um, you can just choose whether you wanna do it per answer or down here at the bottom in a more general sense. When you finish the question, you can click done and you have your first question.
So I'm going to go ahead and add um, another question real quick. And I'm just going to do true false and say, I'm going to call it Santa. Let's say Steve Snyder sometimes looks like Santa. And I'm going to leave that as true. I don't need a calculator for that question. I'm not going to put it in a bank. And it is worth five points because it's muy importante. And I'm done. So now you'll notice I have two questions. And if you look quickly at the, na the navigation on the left-hand side, that was our title. Those were our instructions. And then you have two questions here. If you open this up, you'll be able to see a little more information. And you'll notice that they have these little grab bars on the, on the right-hand side. You can move these questions around in here by dragging them on top of each other and letting them go. And you notice that they rearranged over here. So this is a quick way to rearrange your questions if necessary in the navigation. You can also do it with these grab bars here on the right, but given the limited screen space, um, it's a little more advantageous to do it here in the navigation area. If you want to get rid of a question, of course, you can hit the delete trash can icon, or if you want to go back and edit a question, you can hit the pencil icon. Now, someone's asking why I would use this over huh? the classic. Someone wants to know whether I would why I would want to use this over classic. You may want to answer that at the end, but um. okay. Well, I mean, this the there's a couple of quick answers for that. One is there are way more question types in new quizzes, and two, uh, new quizzes will replace classic quizzes. Uh, in, pro in probably just less than a year. I'm guessing it'll be summer 2021. So whether or not you use it now, definitely in spring, you're gonna wanna start playing with it and migrating your classic quizzes over so that you don't have a lump sum of work to do come summer. Um, Lockdown Browser does work with new quizzes now. So you can require Lockdown Browser on new quizzes and it has the added advantage of that it will automatically launch Lockdown Browser, whereas Classic Quizzes does not. So the other thing, to, one of the other things to think about is in Classic Quizzes, you would create question groups and you would say, go to my item bank and pull in questions and randomize them. Uh, in the settings for this quiz, if you create the questions just here, you can randomize the questions and the answers for the entire quiz in the settings, but you can also create sort of a question group. It's just a little different in that you come up here to item banks and it creates this little fly out. And you say, okay, I wanna go to this bank and you can choose these questions one by one by clicking the plus icon or, and that's if you're just trying to add questions to this quiz. And that's a great way to go ahead and pick and choose, you know, a couple of questions from different item banks. So say, for example, this is like a midterm and you want to include chapters one through five out of their question banks, you could create, uh, you know, you can pick and choose. You want to add this specific question, that specific question, that specific question. That's what the little pluses are for. If you want to narrow this down by multiple choice or essay or whatever, you could do that here. And this is looking for those questions or you can choose this all random button at the top. And so what you're doing is either adding all of the questions or you're creating a random sampling. So I'm gonna do that. And when I create that, when I get down here, you can see that I have a group that now says one through 14. And I still have the two original questions that I put in there about Santa Claus and SMU. And now I have one through 14 that came out of that item bank. Now, right now it's pulling it all of the questions. If I hit the edit icon, I can come down here and I can say, no, 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 out of those, you know, 14 questions, what I really want is for you to pull eight of those questions at two points apiece. And so even though there's 14 in that bank, it will randomly pull eight. And I could say done. 
and it updates. So eight questions pulled from that bank, two points a piece, that's 16 points. And I got these six and these three. So that's my totals. Now, again, you really wanna make sure that your points here, which is totaled up to 25, matches the points that you did when you created this assignment and I said 50. So I need to keep going to make this worth 50 points or when I'm done with this, I need to go edit the original thing I put in and change the point value to match the points that I've created in the quiz questions. So either way you do it, you just need to make sure that this total point value here matches the total point value of the assignment. Otherwise your students will end up with less credit than they're supposed to or extra credit. All right, so as an instructor, again, we won't be using outcomes on these quizzes, but um, they just recently added this preview function, which seems like kind of a, a, a duh kind of thing. It should have been there from the beginning, but you do have the preview function now that you could take as the instructor, click it, and you can go through the quiz and answer it and see it. So just real quick, if I click preview, Notice it puts this huge bar at the bottom to let you know that you're just previewing the quiz. So if I just go in and this is supposed to be numbers, numbers, letters. I'm just gonna answer a few more and then we can see. And if I hit submit, says, oh, you didn't answer question three. Yeah, I don't care. It will come up and it'll generate you and say, tell you know what you got right, what you got wrong, and then it'll give you all the information there. So again, that's just the preview function. Inside settings here, um, for all the questions on the quiz, you have the ability to shuffle all the questions. So one becomes eight and two becomes three and so on and so forth. You can also set it to shuffle all the answers when possible. So, you know, like uh, multiple choice and, you know, the matching kind of questions, those kind of things, those will all shuffle. You can definitely set it for one question at a time. Um, you can set a password. Time limit, of course, the timer on the quiz. We don't use IP filters at SMU. Uh, we have too many access points that are within a same room that some students in the back may be on one access point and someone on the right is on another and everybody else is on a third. So we don't use those here. This is where you could set the calculator option for the entire quiz as opposed to on a per question basis. Allow multiple attempts, makes sense, right? And then restrict students view. This is where you set those options to whether or not you want the students to see the correct answers and when you want them to see the correct answers. Reports will only come into play uh, once you know students have taken the quiz, but these are the same reports that you get in classic, like item analysis and uh, uh, outcomes analysis. Again, we won't be using out outcomes. And then moderate will show you uh, a very similar view to what you see in classic quizzes, where you can click this and give additional time to students, um, or you can even open it up completely for a single student and let them just go until they finish. Um, or you can set time limit multiplier so you can say, okay, well, this student gets time and a half. Notice this, these settings will be applied to all course assignments for the student. So on all new quizzes, if you set a multiplier for like a, a student who works with the, uh, the DAS office and needs time and a half, once you set this, you don't have to set it repeatedly for every quiz. It's good for all of the new quizzes. It specifically says assignments. Does that occur or is it even relative just to other graded items? No, it's supposed to be only for new quizzes, which are technically an assignment with the LTI right now. I'm assuming that once this becomes full, you know, full blown into quizzes, it'll say quizzes and not assignments. Moderate allows you to give additional attempts. Uh, and of course, the time adjustment is in there as well. It's redundant. Um, I think some of this will go away later, but uh, again, everything's still in beta, so it's uh, not everything is built out perfectly yet. So I can return. And when I click return, it'll take me back to um, my main course. If I 
that one I created, remember that it said 50 points. So I'll need to go here. Um, I'm sorry, I needed to edit that, not go into it. So if I go to back to that one, I need to go to edit and change this to 25 because that's what my quiz was still actually worth and save it. All right, so I'll pause real quick. I mean, that is the meat of new quizzes. Is there any Questions we want to go over before we mention anything else? Cassidy, there's a question in the Q&A. If you do not want students to go back to a question once they have answered it, how do you set that up? Okay. So that was something that was still coming in new quizzes. Let's see if we do one question at a time. There you can allow backtracking. If you uncheck that, they can't go backwards. Okay. Um, someone in a previous session asked about regrading questions. Like if you realize that maybe like on a multiple choice question, you marked the wrong one as the correct answer. And some of the students let you know. Uh, you can regrade the question. It's uh, regrading is sort of strange. Um, you will have to go into quizzes. And you'll need to, I don't think I have one that's been taken, so I can't show the whole answer, but you'll need to go into the new quiz. Oh, no, you have to go into speed grader. So well, on the new quiz, you'll have to look at it as an assignment and go into the speed grader. And that's where you can regrade a question and allow that to be, um, and then you'll be prompted with options about whether or not to regrade everything and provide points. And it'll warn you that by changing the answer, some students may get it wrong and now their grade is dropped. So you'll have the option to give all the students who got it previously correct, even though it wasn't the right answer, credit, as well as any student who actually got the right answer credit. So you'll have those two options when you do a regrade. Again, we won't be using uh, outcomes on quizzes. Just want to make that clear because the new tool that we're getting should be announced very shortly um, that we'll be using for outcomes, whether you're using quizzes or assignments to do your outcomes. So I don't have a regrade, I don't have a quiz, you know, students in my training that have taken a quiz to be able to show you regrading, but let me pull up the guide and I can kind of show you the pictures on that. Um, do a new one. Okay. So to do a regrade, so say for example, um, you realize that you marked a, a, an incorrect answer as correct and you need to fix it. So what you'll do is go into grades and then into the speed, when you're in the speed, into the grades, you'll click out this little, on, this little fly out on any student, doesn't matter which one, and jump into speed grader. When you get into speed grader, you know, you can go to that student who let you know that the answer was incorrect, just so that you know you've got someone who marked it the right way. And you can go in and you can, once you find the question here, you'll see, you know, John Adams, correct answer, and you wrote the correct answer was James Madison, right? So, but the actual answer to the question is John Adams. So what you do is come in and you'll hit this regrade option here at the bottom, mark the correct answer, 
and you can adjust the point value if you want to. And you click the regrade button that becomes bright blue um, on the screen. When that happens, you'll be given options on what you want to do with that regrade. So you can say, well, everybody who actually got it right gets credit. And if they got it wrong, then of course they don't get credit. But of course, then you'll have students who call you and say, why did my quiz grade drop? So you can then choose to award points for both answers. Um, and then you could choose the option to give them credit if they answered the question at all, or just give everybody credit whether they answered the question or not. So you have those four options. Uh, and once you've chosen an option, you click regrade and it will regrade and give the appropriate score to all the students based off of the options that you chose. Inside your speed grader, you'll be able to see that like if you chose to only give them credit for the correct answer, here they, had a, they did get one out of three points, but now they get zero because they had the answer wrong. And that's basically regrade. All right. Any other questions about new quizzes? Cassie, the Q&A box is looking pretty quiet. I guess that means you did an awesome job. All right. Hey, Levi, let's go ahead and stop the recording real quick.